Oh, yeah, we're rolling. Three years in the making, you know. I haven't made any content, but we've been uh, collecting some shoes here. I'll show you what we got. You know, we're just coming through. I got the Yeezys. You already know what they are. The Ice Blues. Some of the Breads. Some of the Royals. Some of... What are you doing? Yo, Tim's my... We got some real here. Alright, you know what? The Milli Vanilli... Yeah, I'm just telling you this right now. That was only the icing on the cake. You want to know oh, the real truth? That's my computer. Yeah, I couldn't do it online. They tracked me. What? I'm in the same house! You unlock this door with the key of stupidity. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of falsehoods. A dimension of bad ideas. Of contradictions. You're moving to a land without substance and too much peanut butter. You've just crossed over into the shit post zone. Alright, he's up here. Dude, why do I have to come here? I already told you, those nuts are killing me and. I needed the muscle, okay? Now this guy, he's top of the line. I found him on Google Marketplace. Real good shit, I'm telling you, man. He, I think he worked overseas in like Korea or Japan. I think he was like a master of like cinematography or something. Hey, 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 come on, let's go, get up. They say come, Kai Chow. Speak English. I think he understands, man. All right, you got the gear, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, you know what? Oh, what is this? Look at, look at how big this stuff is. Man. Those, those nuts, they can catch you from the heat signature. You know what? It's, it's fine. I came prepared, alright? This piece of shit phone, you can't get a signal in the basement to save someone else's life, alright? Alright, leave the gear, bring the shisha. Let's go. You're gonna, you're gonna edit out my face, right? Oh, of course. The only way to keep this information credible is keeping it alive. So, uh, just for the record, how do you like us to uh, address you as? Call me Mr. B. Uh, so, Mr. K, I'm sure everyone watching is wondering what could have caused such emotion. Not what, but whom? Raimi. Little Raimi boy, as he likes to be called. Before we get into the truth, can you give us a bit of a backstory on yourself? Well, not to sound too egotistical, but I know everyone back in Tinseltown. I was close friends with Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and Harvey Winston. Uh, suffice to say, if something was uh, important going on, I was part of it. So, tell us about Ray. Well, to begin, everything you know about him is bullshit. All those image board posts with outlandish exaggeration from his films are the closest thing to the truth you'll ever see. He doesn't even have brothers. The Raimi twins, the Raimi brothers, all actors and CGI. The only thing the public knows about him is that he's in fact a filmmaker and a producer. He was also the Illuminati's most effective enforcer and hitman. How did this all start? Well, this Wikipedia stage starts that he's 59 years old, born in Michigan, large family. All fabrications, however. His birth was actually a bigger secret than those A. Lamaus in Area 69. The Illuminati has been working on the ultimate human being for decades now. It turns out that Milli Vanilli were actually escaped subjects that had to be controlled and silenced as soon as possible to allow the development of mankind to continue. What made Milli Vanilli so dangerous to them? Their unchecked talent and charisma would inadvertently demoralize all of humanity to give up as Milli Vanilli would ascend past humanity. The Illuminati would be left behind with us as well. So, back to Raimi. What else can you tell us about him? Well, Milli Vanilli was born in the facilities, the ascension of humanity, but instead 
of the music, he was designed to be the ultimate warrior. After World War II, the Illuminati worked tirelessly to come up with a contingency plan in case some Hugo boss wearing motherfucker came to claim Europe again. That subject that could withstand what they thought was the toughest test to judge multilateral problem solving under distress. Finally, they decided to see he would react during real situations. So, what did they do? The Illuminati sent his ass to Nam. For the majority of the war, he was part of the MACV SOG, a highly classified group of spec op soldiers responsible for recon, sabotage, assassination, psychological warfare. You name it, he wrote the screenplay for it. However, one operation left them in a, cat in a catatonic where they recovered him and almost scrapped the entire project. What happened to him? On a mission to liberate a bunch of Viet Cong orphans by donating them napalm, Rami's plane was shot down deep in enemy territory. Having to fight his way through countless soldiers, he eventually ran out of ammo and was captured along with two only survivors. That night, he earned the title Kadarian Demon. For over a week, he was subjugated to inhumane tortures. He had to give honest critiques to modern art and worse. What could be worse than that? It's too rough to... Oh, it, it, sorry, man. What the... Are you serious? I thought this was professional. Oh, this man is cool, man. So we're good, man. All right. Okay. Our hands. Okay. Our hands. Back, back to Randy. Well, the bump on the head helped fix things through. Russian roulette. The Viet Cong got a kick out of watching prisoners play the game and bet all the time on who would live. Two men under his command, Ivan and Ted, those survivors, they never walked out of that camp, having both lost to Ramy and Roulette. After being liberated soon after, Ramy returned home to America, a broken man. What did he do after returning to America? I mean, a side project for Ramy was uh, cinema. and Nam, he airmailed videos to enemies to intimidate and shock. Now in America, he used those skills by making the Evil Dead series. You can see his visceral carnage close angled shots, and twisted comedy, just how much Nam affected him. In fact, Raimi would challenge anyone who had a problem with his vision to film to Russian roulette. He always had, with his revolver, three bullets, one for him and two for his comrades he left back in the jungle. So, how did his role as an enforcer even begin? Immediately after coming back, those nuts put him to work, hunting down political opponents, Rival peanut cartels and shit posters alike. Even after all the trauma and numb, he had a 100% vitality rate. They are just waiting to see how long he can last before they mass produce him. Then nothing can stop him or the nutty. Is there any hope to stop them? A true Rammy is stronger than 22 elephants, faster than a taco fart, and smarter than 0 0.5 Einsteins combined. But he will never pass an opportunity for a game at roulette. Those are your best thoughts. Thank you, Keith. I, I mean, Mr. K, I, I appreciate all you've done for the progress of truth. You're, you're going to edit that out, right? And edit out my voice as well? Uh, yeah, totally, totally. All right. Man, what a load of bullshit. Diddy Mao! Diddy Mao! So, who funded this shit anyway? Smoke weed every day.